And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Upsurge Minor League Playoffs here, round number three in the loser's bracket. And we do have Omega Gaming Ice here versus Akuma Skimitars. I'm joined on the desk by Rude Dude, and we are well into the bands here on Pro Draft. But Rude Dude, welcome back once again for another week of the UML Playoffs. Thank you very much, Idea. We're happy to be here casting these Omega Boys once again on the run through the lower bracket here. These guys have, uh, you know, came third seed in their group, yet to uh, drop any series in the lower lower bracket in this run, and they're coming up against the Akuma Skimitars, who have taken out some formidable opponents up till now, so this is probably going to be, obviously, their, one of their hardest challenges so far, but we are well underway into Pro Draft. We've got TF, Graves, Rumble, Band from Ice, and then Wukong, LeBlanc, and Thresh Band from the Akuma Skimitars. Ice and Akuma Skimitars here looking like they're going for their jungle priority early on. And Karth is getting picked up here by Akuma Skimitars. Can be actually a three-way flex. We have been seeing quite a bit of uh, Karthus in the mid lane as a result of the buffs that he had received on the previous patch here, uh, 10.15, I believe it was. And then uh, also we've actually been seeing a little bit of Karthus bottom lane uh, as a mage option. So it would be interesting to see exactly where that Karthus will end up going. The uh, the Ash getting picked up here for the side of Omega Gaming Ice will be able to allow them to have a little more slow power in their back pocket as we continue to move through this draft. Yeah, and interestingly, we see Ice picking up the Swain as well. Swain receiving a few buffs on this patch as well. And I'd be interested to see where this Swain does end up because there's always been a little bit of a play base for the support Swain in the bot lane. He's able to isolate one of the targets with the grasp, but pull back as well if he hits any form of CC. It doesn't have to be his own. So setting up with an Ash Arrow per chance to connect could be really interesting to see if that interaction does play out. But obviously Swain has seen a lot of play around mid, around top as well. So can't underestimate the power of the Swain as a flex pick. It looks like the Akuma Skimitars are going to pick up Galio as their second pick here. And that, that pretty much removes all of the, the flex potential of the Galio that we've seen because they've picked up the Yumi as well. So, you know, normally you'd see Galio flexed maybe into support, but with Yumi picked up, we're pretty certain that the support and the mid lane are both sorted. Yep. And we'll just have to see where this Karthus ends up for Akuma Skimitars. Yeah, it could still be a sent to the jungle role here for Akuma Skimitars. Um, you could also be in that ADK role, but I'm I'm going to imagine that they are going to draft themselves something that is more along the lines of a traditional AD carry alongside this Yumi. We do see the Ezreal ban coming out here from Omega Gaming Ice, which I think is great for them. It does deny the Yumi Ezreal synergy. And Jarvan 4 picked up here. Rude dude, I think we've got ourselves a Karthus AD carry. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Okay, I've been playing this so much in solo queue. It's so strong. Uh, and I, I, on any cast that I've been on, I've been hyping up Karthus bot to no end. But in this particular instance, I don't know that I'm a 100% fan of it. Just because the last pick from Akuma has to be so AD heavy on the top side as well, that it, it becomes really telegraphed and makes this blind pick for Omega quite easy to go for. Because they know they're going to be up against an AD champion in the top side, or Akuma have to pick something very yeah. uh, off meta to make it work. I'd like to see Omega Gaming Ice maybe pick up the Orn here. Uh, it does have the ability to kind of add to the scaling prowess of the Quirky of the Ash. Uh, Olaf can get a Black Cleaver upgraded at some point in time, but looks like the Kled getting the hover here for the pick for Koros, and it will get locked in. So Kled going to round out this composition is going to be able to follow up on those Ash arrows with a little bit of that fast footwork. And uh, Akuma Skimitars, now they have that final counter pick, looking to counter pick this Kled. Um, they have a lot of engage already on their team. I mean, you think about kind of the wombo combo ness of this composition. Jarvan Galio is has been a very, very common combination of jungler and mid laner. Uh, just with Galio being able to come in with the hero's entrance. And there it is. Fiora going to get picked up for a little bit of split push power towards the mid to late game here. They will round out our draft here for game number one. Yeah, and Fiora, a really nice pick into the Kled as well. Something that we can mention is any of the picks or any of the CC coming through from Kled does become really straightforward for the Fiora to cast her repost on. It becomes very telegraphed when, obviously, if you have the timings down, you can easily pick up when the Kled will be uh, yoinking you back in. Similarly with his ultimate, the 
ability uh, to, to telegraph when that is going to connect and do the CC to you. Makes it easy for you to repost, easy to get some nice trades back in on the cled. So definitely some potential for outplays on the top side here. We'll have to wait and see though which of these two top laners comes out because we we called it that we'd have a big uh, big AD champion out on the top side and they've drafted well with that with the Fiora. But now their, their composition sort of has a lot of things or it lacks an identity particularly. You know, they've got Jarvan Gallio that really wants to go in and they've got Karthus to follow up uh, on the engage just with the Requiem if it needs to be. And then they've got this Fiora in the side lane split pushing, which can also actually be benefited from the, the Karthus Requiem because if a 1v1 is looking a little bit dicey for Fiora, the Requiem to come down can definitely help out as well. So definitely two different styles of play coming out from these teams and it is going to be the Swain support as well that we talked Absolutely. about earlier. But we'll have to see. I, I think... Uh, you know, and Redude, I think that I, at the end of the day, I am going to actually side with Akuma here on their draft. I think that they've definitely w drafted themselves a very team fight oriented draft with the core composition that they have with the Jarvan, Galio, Yumi, and Karthus. Uh, Fiora, obviously very good in the side wave. You know, she can teleport in on these fights as well. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I make a gaming eyes here. They're definitely going to be looking for picks with things like the Ash, with the Swain here. Uh, with the Olaf, Corky obviously can come on in through the back line with the Valkyrie. Um, so, I, you know, I, I'm looking for Omega Gaming Eyes, especially with this Olaf pick in the jungle, to be utilizing some of that early clear speed and early advantage the Olaf will have to be able to get themselves picks in the solo lanes with uh, to kind of like negate the power of this Fiora early on. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, they need to try and shut it down and keep on top of it before it becomes that split push monster that Fiora really can do. And Happy that you brought up the Olaf as well, because the Olaf, or I, uh, I say the Olaf, is a champion that you'd mentioned really uh, does well in the early game, obviously. We all know Olaf, this early game jungler, doesn't scale particularly well into the late game, and that's why they've drafted themselves, you know, Ash, Corky, and Cled and Swain, which all scale really quite well as we get later and later into the game. So we just bring up the in-client draft for you guys so that you know where we are. Obviously, the, job, the Olaf, really, whenever I see a team draft Olaf, I'm looking to Supermark in particular here to get at least two or three dragons in before Akuma are able to respond and use those dragons as pressure to make, make a dragon soul and then get themselves that form of win condition as well. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how this is going to turn out here. Obviously, uh, Okuma has drafted themselves a little bit of dis disengage with Yumi's Lost Chapter. Uh, can kind of negate maybe some of the power that Omega Gaming uh, Ice has drafted, where they do kind of just want to run at you. Obviously, Olaf can always pop the Ragnarok to become unstoppable, but he might quickly find himself overextended uh, if Yumi is available. So I'm going to be looking for them to finding flanks, finding places for the club to come in, uh, you know, either with deep wards, with uh, flanking teleport, things like that, to get themselves kind of a more surprise when these team fights do occur, because I think they're going to need that little extra buff to those fights. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure that that's the. the I'm going to say that Ice here have got just a really simple run at you comp, right? Because if even if in a in a, in a team fight scenario, let's say the Corky holds onto package really well, and Olaf with the onslaught that Kled provides with his ultimate he's able to run in as well i think that the way that ice go in is through the front door you know we talked about these flanks but i think that Kled can just press r and escort the team into the back lines of akuma and yes they don't when we look at the comp they don't particularly have a back line their back line consists of karthus which is something that they've drafted really well around because they've appeared or they've spotted this really heavy dive comp from ice and just gone well we'll just not give anything for you to dive onto who are you going to dive? Arcarthus, who then, once he's died, still pumps out a load of damage and there's nothing you can do. So there's, you know, really two different comps that have been drafted around really well from both teams, in my opinion, here. Yeah, it's uh, late game Karthus always is kind of a terror to deal with. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how Omega Gaming Ice is going to handle that. But with all that said, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be moving on over into our spectator delay for competitive integrity. Again, I'm the Idea PC, joined by Rude Dude here on the Omega Gaming Esports Casting Desk. Thank you for coming to the broadcast for this upsurge minor league playoff match between Omega Gaming Ice and Akuma Skimitars. Do not go anywhere. Do not change that browser. We will see you right after the break out on Summoner's Rift.
friends never die when the world is calling you can you hear them screaming out your name legends never die they become a part of you every time you Welcome to the world, no heroes and villains. Welcome to the war, we've only begun. So pick up your weapon and face it. There's blood on the ground, go and take it. You get one shot to make it out alive. So higher and higher, you're chasing. It's deep in your bones, go and take it. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Upsurge Minor Leagues Round 3 of the Losers Bracket here, where we have Omega Gaming Ice going up against a, Kim, a excuse me, Akum Skimathars here, getting ready to have this match go off. And, you know, Omega Gaming Ice, they've done themselves a really, really good job so far throughout the Losers Bracket, having some dominating performances against some higher rated seeded teams. And uh, both of these teams, you know... Some might say you may not expect them to have made it even this far through the loser's bracket. But as we all know, Omega Gaming Ice, very, very effective uh, and maybe a bit underseeded 
for where they should have been. The early flash there, though, going to get blown out from Colossal Chungus. So I'm expecting this Olaf. I'm expecting Supermark to have some attention towards the bot side of the map. Yeah, I know Flash Carthus early on is going to be something that I'd like to see the Ice Guys try and punish here. Just also a quick note to mention that we didn't get onto in the pro draft is that Ice are playing with Banjito again. Obviously, we saw him last week fill in for Kaseon, who I believe is still having the internet difficulties in his uh, in his state. So we'll have to uh, see if Banjito can perform as well as he did last week because I remember his Thresh games were definitely a top tier Thresh for that, for sure. It really was uh, quite exciting to watch, actually, uh, last week, I do have to say. But uh, overall here, going to be looking for something. They're going to be invading here, looking for the kill, looking to get this Jarvan down. The early smite comes out, and that's first blood. And the buff going on over to Supermark as Omega Gaming Eyes looking to press the advantage here early. Wow, yeah, they get themselves the first blood. You know, we talked about this Olaf being a strong early on pick, and uh, Olaf level 1, definitely strong level 1 champion. Up, right up there with Braum and, you know, Swain with essentially two layers of CC at level one with his passive and his E. Really strong as well. So nice to see from Ice that they abuse their early champions and their early power and get themselves a nice little lead here. Olaf with a first blood. Going to look to snowball. It's exactly what you want. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you're able to deny the Jarvan, the early, uh, you know, level two ganks. Actually, Banjito here in a little bit of trouble Yo, no respect, Flash, gonna come on through, and Colossal Chungus gonna be able to knock down Banjito here on the Swain. That feels real bad if you're Omega Gaming Ice. You have the Flash available, Waffle Wheel? Okay, he's gonna pop the, the uh, heal there. Oh, Lost Ball Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's uh, kind of dangerous here, actually. They could be looking for something. <sighs> Waffle Wheel has to be so careful. <laughs> There's fighting everywhere. Supermark's got Flash as well. Koros and Oven Johnson have been scrapping non-top on this top side as well. And Supermark is just waiting for the opportunity to go in. Uh, he's looking for it now here. Yumi not going to be able to land here. Flash coming out now from Supermark. Gaz, the axe is full. Colossal Chung is in a little bit of trouble here. Yumi not going to be able to follow the heal here. Supermark, more than healthy. Going to walk right away from that one there. And there it is. Oh, look at gaming eyes. They're going to right the ship and its wrongs down there on the bottom side. But Koros here have to be careful. A lot of uh, early pressure coming from this Fiora. He uh, He's not exactly winning in CS right now as this uh, wave is getting ready to crash into his tower, but definitely has to be careful here. The Fiora can put some damage and put some hurting on this clit early. Yeah, he's definitely doing well on this top side, and we talked about the counter pick early on uh, that, you know, pretty much throughout the lane, Fiora's going to have the advantage over this clit. Um, I'm happy to see that we've got, so, that we've got this level of uh, comfortability on the top side because... Not very often that you'll see a Fiora picked in competitive play, in the amateur scene at least as well. So, really happy to see that they're happy to pull out this spicy pick, shall we say. This mechanically intensive champion that we don't often see have the results, but is definitely working out here on this top side early on. Absolutely. Colossal Chung is here, though, just able to zone so much space between himself and this Omega Gaming Ice bottom lane. We're seeing that it's reflected in CS. It's obviously reflected in the health bars as well. Um, you know, Karthus, uh, this is actually my first time seeing the Karthus bot. I've heard of it, uh, you know, being uh, put in the bot lane, but I did not realize that it was actually this oppressive. Uh, so... Yeah, yeah so... You, you kind of have to hand it to him. I, I, I've played a bit of Karthus bot a fair lot, and I I feel like I can talk a little bit about it as we see just Banjito getting dumpstered down here. You know, what you really want, is, or the thing that Carthus Spot does really well is just pushing waves. The issue that other mages or ADCs, for example, down on bot side have is that they can't push the wave as easily and with as little resources expended as Carthus can because the amount of cues that it takes Carthus to clear a wave really isn't that many. And with the E buff that he received, you know, the little mana regeneration coming through on killing minions makes it super easy for him to just clear back line and pretty much restore all the mana that he spent clearing it he has the skittles on a pretty you know very short cooldown obviously the gimmick of Karthus is that that he just throws out skittles as he pleases and with the push potential that he has it makes it really easy for him to get lane control and just bully out any any ad carry that doesn't have that same level of wave push that you would expect it is pretty dangerous, actually, you know, when this Yumi hits level 6 and she has Lost Chapter available, you put down the Karthus wall, you get the slows and a lot of damage coming out here, uh, you know, and I'm not worried about Colossal Chungus being able to land the Qs as he's been able to demonstrate so far uh, that he has that. 
Uh, very important uh, skill set in his toolbox. You know, hitting your abilities is uh, definitely <laughs> uh, something you have to do. So it's going to be uh, pretty dangerous, I think, here for this bottom lane. Uh, a little bit of trading going back and forth up towards the top side. Chorus will get unmounted over Donson. They're going to take a little bit of damage. He's almost Ooh. got the mount back here. He's going to play aggressively with the flash forward now. Has it, but he does not have the health bar. No flash available. We'll be able to just dash back and away. And uh, Chorus there getting a little excited with the uh with the remount there but will not pay for it with his life yeah and if that backdrop on a rip hits he knows he's got the timing oh it's a fight bot oh very nice there colossal chunga is gonna go fall down here as waffle wheel flashes on forward here to secure himself the kill level six though secured here by chorus does have the bear rope on a trap there can't quite get the pull and is going to respect the fiora and her mobility econ though in a little bit of trouble here. One more rocket, one more auto, maybe? No, not quite. Flash will go, and he will be saved barely there. Ah, oh, man, if uh, if Quirky had enough mana there, I think that we do see the Galio fall, but unfortunately not able to pick that one up. Supermark, though, we're going to go for a little bit of an invade and pick up a blue buff here for himself. Yeah, that's his second blue buff that he's managed to steal away from this Jarvan. So, you know, and despite all that, Hide Haru here on this Jarvan has managed to keep level in farm with him, so... Quite impressive from the Jarvan to stay level in terms of just sheer camps farmed versus the Olaf. And obviously, we see Supermark did take a little bit of time out of his efficient jungle pathing to take the first Drake, the Mountain Drake, for ice. We see Chorus on this yeah. top side. Yeah, Oven Johnson here. I mean, his his champion kit obviously counters the Kled. Uh, as the, when the bear trap on a rope does come out, he's able to put up the uh, repost, I believe it is, uh, to be able to deny any kind of pullback on that. So it has, it has saved him quite a few times, I do believe, and it does allow him to kind of stay. But now Jarvan here, going to go ahead and flag and drag up into the top lane here. Three members, though, versus three. The D-mount coming from Koros here is in some trouble. Hide Haro, though, going to fall to the Electrocute Prox. Benjito picks the kill, cut it up. Oven Johnson now, though, will go down as an awful wheel picks it up. Ash Arrow not going to quite find its mark. That is going to be an easy clean 2-4-0 for the side of Omega Gaming Ice. Yeah, they get themselves two kills on the top side off the back of a really nice rotation up to the top side. We see Ice do this so often where, and again, talk about this as well, they ha it happens in pro play where reach that eight minute mark, the seven and a half minute mark, whenever it may be, and especially when Drake is down, bot lanes will just rotate up to top side, take the top lane, uh, yeah. take some top lane plates, get the advantage on the top side, and Really nice bait from Chorus, you know, baiting up the mid lane and jungler from Akuma here to essentially cause their demise. Toucan Sam just going to be on the bot side here, farming his way up versus the two members here. And a bit of a weird lane situation from Ice, but I expect that as soon as the Rift Herald has been secured, we'll see it return to some form of normalness that we are used to seeing. Yeah, and you talked about how. You know, we see the rotations coming out from Omega Gaming Ice quite often. And uh, I do have to say, with all the games that I've watched from this team, I'm very, very impressed with at what high level this team does play at. Uh, I think that their macro is, is, is and has been very, very good throughout this entire tournament. Um, a lot of damage, though, coming down on Oven Johnson. Has to be careful. He's just been getting punished and bullied out. Uh, he's been denied quite a bit of farm up here towards the top side of the map and is not looking too great for him. The Kled has been able to equalize that mid lane now where he had the previous golden uh, disadvantage. Uh, but to, just to talk about Omega Gaming Ice in the macro for a bit, you know, they, they have played what I think is some very, very good and effective League of Legends here. Uh, and now, well, the arrow's going to go wide and a miss there. Uh, rude dude, but <laughs> nothing uh, too crazy. Uh, and I, I like this too because with them moving to the bottom, Lane towards the top side of the map there. Elvin Johnson going to take some more damage. Uh, they've been able to push this lave in uh, so consistently against the Fiori that they've actually been able to get themselves first turret of the game with that Rift Herald there. So, you know, good play here coming from the side of Omega Gaming Eyes, being able to utilize the effectiveness in the range of Waffle Wheel and Banjito to be able to get enough tower plates to be able to put it, it within that, uh, you know, instant death range of the Herald. Yeah, exactly. And with all that gold that they funneled into Waffle Wheel here, he actually went back and picked up his full Blade of the Ruined King, having only got, I think, the Vamp Scepter and the Longsword as components for it. Managed to finish the Bilgewater, finish the Recurve Bow entirely, and the, you know, the completed item itself. And as we alluded to, as soon as they secure themselves the Rift Herald, likely see the bot lane 
just return to their bot side, maybe get themselves a couple of plates. And all that time, while Karthus was farming down bot side, he only got himself two plates for himself. And that is the one, I guess, disadvantage to Karthus bot lane here, along with his lack of mobility, is that he doesn't hit turrets incredibly hard. So if you leave him alone, you don't really have to threat too much about your, your tower falling. You see a perfect example there that two plates have fallen whilst Ice had been able to take the entire turret on the top side. Yep, good overall play just coming out here from the side of Omega Gaming Ice. Um, Colossal Chungus though here. Banjito looking for the the hand to come out and grab you and pull you into death's awaiting grasp. Um, but overall, I mean, you just look at kind of the map state here. Omega Gaming Ice, they've gotten some early kills here on the Olaf. They've gotten themselves first tower. Kled is now in a matchup against the Fiora where he's been able to equalize the CS disadvantage. And as a result of doing so with that first tower going down, it does kind of put himself in favorable conditions against this Fiora where if he is able to get an advantage where the Fiora needs to run away, he just presses R, runs at her, and, you know, runs her down for the kill. Uh, with all this map pressure that they've had though, they do pick themselves up and secure the next cloud dragon here. And uh, it looks like rude dude that we will be seeing ourselves an ocean dragon for this game. Yeah, the ocean soul gonna come through it for whichever side picks it up. Obviously we've got ice, two drakes to none with a strong advantage going in. And that is what you expect from the Olaf. I talked about it earlier on that we want Olaf to pick up two, free, two drakes before he's uh, run out of effectiveness and with a 2-0 got a uh, kill lead as well I feel like his yeah. effect he's a set he's extended the mm. period of time that he'll be strong but hide haru's down bot here Hot lane here yeah this could be in some trouble yep lost chapter gonna come right on out swain's gonna get immediately rooted nice stop watch to be able to deny some of that damage coming out he's gonna continue to follow up the chase here though but karthus now with the ultimate he could secure himself the kill here jarvan will indeed not make it so i'm not sure that uh, the health bars are too low here. Galios has arrived. He's able to get himself the double kill off the back of this Yumi. Supermark now in a little bit of trouble, but Tower might dissuade here. Axe is coming on out. That's a great bait coming out here from the side of Omega Gaming Eyes. Supermark doing a fantastic job. Colossal Chungle is just barely being able to get himself to safety here. Actually, might be able to find a follow up. Possibly. No. Karthus uh, is scary. <laughs> oh, the Axe is just. Not quite enough here. Supermark having to walk himself away. Teleport now going to come out, and that's going to be the zoomies getting colossal Chungus back to safety. And that charge isn't going to find anyone. Chungus walks his way down into the tri bush, and Chorus going to concede that he's not going to find anything there. And up on the top side, just off of that play, Fiora gets herself a plate or so. So little advantage going the top side. But overall, in that fight, a two for two with all the expenditure from Akuma Skimitars there. Not the end of the world if we're at Omega Gaming, you know, sitting there thinking, well, they expended a lot of their ultimates and committed Jarvan Flash, Karthus ultimate as well. That's a big cooldown that we, you know, can't take lightly. And they look like they get themselves a load of plates down, <laughs> down the bot side as well. All right. This actually could easily be, I believe, a first turret here. Tower plates are now gone here at 14 minutes. They have this wave that they're able to kind of stop here uh, with Waffle Will and Banjito. I mean, just a few more autos will really do this one down. I mean, you see it right there. Yeah, tower going on over to the side of Omega Gaming Ice on the bot side of the map. So well played here by OGI. Just, uh, you know, kind of able to absorb pressure, uh, especially Supermark. I mean, he did a fantastic job of being able to, to deny the kill uh, to Akuma Skimitars on the bottom side of the map there. So well played here overall. Yeah, it really is. And see the the side of okuma here they, they've gone for this really late game scaling style which is going to be great when they get to the late game but ice have done a really good job of punishing them early on with this olaf pick and with the swain pick potential to shut them down early on mm -hmm. i i'd like to touch quickly on this rod of aegis on the carthus uh i have played around a lot with carthus bot builds and i don't think that rod of ages especially in this particular comp uh, is, is really what you want to go for. And I, I, I'd advocate for never building Rod of Ages on Karthus anymore. And you just go straight for Ludens, go Leandries, and just really raw AP. You know, get once you've got your mana item through, you don't want to be waiting 10 minutes for yourself to scale up. And as I say, especially this game where they're already relying on such late game scaling. You know, you've spent 2,800 gold on the Rod of Ages and you're still waiting for, for 10 minutes before all of that gold becomes uh, effective, or before all the gold becomes effective, you know? So, a little bit of things that they can work on should they choose to 
take it into game number two. You know, by no means is this game over. By no means are Ice hitting the Nexus and have completely snowballed this game. But they're in a good position to do so. We've got 50 seconds on the Drake, which will take Ice to Soul Point. But Vision isn't set up down there, so a little bit delayed to get that. We see the reset from Banjito coming oh. through now, so. Yeah, recalls coming on in. Going to be looking for them to uh, kind of get to that advantage just with the recalls here. Taking a look, though. A lot of gold sitting on a lot of these champions here prior to this dragon going over. Banjito with the only one going back is actually doesn't have enough money for the buy there. He is going to be sitting on kind of some awkward gold there. 1k gold uh, in his pockets. Yumi, going to go ahead and go on back there. But, oh man, I'm trying to sit here and assess kind of the gold leads and gold advantages. And... Uh, it is a little bit difficult here. Uh, Corky did go back and was able to spend his gold there. We do see the completed Sheen, Boots, and Monomune here, but there it is. Going to find the hand down on oh, IRO. Oh, that EQ combo will fail, and Waffle Will with the volley able to pick that one up with the kill credit. That is what the doctor ordered, OGI. You find the jungler there in the bush, and uh, that should easily be soul point now here for the side of OGI. Yeah, that should be Drake there. And for all of you guys that are a little bit confused as to what happened there with the Jarvan flag and drag, you know, if you put your drag uh, flag ice and Jarvan E works, it's very similarly to Flash. That oh, with the turret going down mid on the Drake, I'll just hold it. Yeah. Looks like nothing gonna come out. Maybe a kill onto Ika here. Yep, he falls, and they're just gonna yep, keep going. Gonna... Yep, going to find the kills going on over there. Banjito going to be able to back up there for the turret damage. Rift Herald going to get called on towards the mid lane, and they're looking to wrap this and make it two towers mid. I mean, just effective overall. I realized I was muted halfway through casting that, and uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. That's all good. We pick up, and uh, now Ice are Kelly. looking to take this inhibitor turret they might go for the no. inhib here as well they actually they actually might get it they do have another charge here from shelly they're not going to be able to kill it in time there it is inhibitor down 17 minutes and 50 seconds ogi going to get themselves some considerable pressure on the map with that uh for the next five minutes with super minions spawning down the waves they're going to be able to clear out the jungle here as well and deny even more cs from this jarvan uh so it does kind of feel bad if you are the uh, akuma skimitar's jungler yeah, I don't think that he's got a single blue buff on his team the entire game, but with that inhibitor take as well, I want to quickly mention that that is a a big power play, not just uh, in terms of the game state, but as, as a team. The fact that they're willing to take that inhibitor and say that, yes, you know, we can use this inhibitor to get ourselves our win condition, that they're buying themselves essentially five minutes where the farm that they're going to be getting is going to be severely reduced just because of the, the nature of super minions that... They'll take the last hits, push the waves for you. You don't need to be there to push out those waves. So within these five minutes, Ice are essentially saying that we will either get Baron or we will get the Infernal Soul or, or, or we'll get the Ocean Soul because we are confident that this mid lane pressure will be enough to help us get there. So this is sort of a, a five minute window where they're looking to build on their already strong Drake Foundation and maybe go for the Ocean and the Baron when it does eventually spawn. I think it will do them some good here if they are able to utilize that mid-wave pressure in order to secure themselves. Uh, the Ocean Soul, obviously, Colossal Chungus uh, has been very on point with these Karthus Qs and uh, can really kind of poke you out quite effectively. Uh, so I'm interested to see, right, if they are able to pick up this Ocean Soul on the side of OGI. You know, you take a bit of Karthus Poke, you feel a little bit uncomfortable about the engage of the fight, you can just back off, you can heal, you can regen up and approach it from a different angle. So... Um, Overall, it's going to be interesting to see which kind of these ideas is going to really work out for them at the end of the day here. Koros, though, it's going to get the Bear Trap on a parried here. Now going to go right on in, able to find the knock up there. But Over Johnson with the heals here really is looking quite strong. He's definitely winning this 1v1 so far. Is going to get dismounted here. Ah, uh, the Karthus Ultimate Requiem going to come right on in. I don't think it's quite enough. Koros, though, has the Blast Cone. We'll be able to get himself up, out, and away to safety. And that is no harm, no foul from Koros here in the bottom side of the map. Yeah, and that this is going to be a barren start here from Ice. Hide Haru is in the area, oh. so they do are going to be able to spot this out with the flag over the Baron pit. Yep. They see it, and Ice are probably just yep. going to back off of that. Yep, looking for it now. Baron at about half health. Backing up off here, though. They know that it is being done. Fiora still bot side to teleport up. They're not going to risk a uh, a. And they yeah, maybe uh, excited engage. Look at the mid wave. Yep. Mid lane is hitting the turret right now with oh, the super man. minions. 
Yeah, Galio going to be forced to push back here. Ash Arrow not going to quite find its mark there. They're just going to go and do another round of clearing out the vision here. Fiora with the recalls to answer those minions is going to get stopped here by the Kled. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to see if they are going to choose to do this. They might just be looking for the bait, looking to try and find some members out of position here. Karthus now is going to get permanently slowed. He's in trouble. That's going to be the kill going on over to Supermark with the kill credit. Olaf, though, in some danger of falling here. Finds himself clipped in between the walls there, is able to get himself up, out, and away. And that is a one team fight here for OGI as the rest of the team comes on in course with the teleport, is able to wrap that one right on up. And that is four members now down from the side of Akuma Skimitars. They have the super minions in the base. They're pinging the Nexus turrets. I don't, I don't, I, this might be a little early, but they might actually be able to take it up here, depending on how much damage they're able to put out. They have Super Mark. They have Waffle Wheel down here. Big AD threats here from the team. The teleport now coming in from two can Sam. The next turret will fall. And in game number one, ladies and gentlemen, OGI gonna take game number one in this best of three series, and that will be it. Wow, just uh, I'm gonna say near flawless execution on their early game style from Ice right there. They played their macro game that you talked about really well in the early stages. They say to me as the caster, we don't need the soul or the baron. We'll just win the team fight. They're going to be more than happy with that. Obviously, the win is the win. And, you know, with from the roam up top playing from their bot side to get themselves the herald and the top tier turret, top tier one turret, to securing all of the drakes, all of the heralds, all of the enemy blue buffs idea. They were just all over the neutral objectives and even the uh, enemy objectives as well. Yeah, you just have to hand it to the side of Omega Gaming Ice. Uh, you know, they were able to punish that Jarvan early. Obviously, Jarvan is another one of those early game junglers who, you know, prides himself on those level 2, level 3 ganks with the flag and drag combination to be able to blow flashes, to be able to get his uh, solo lanes advantages that uh, kind of carry them through the laning phase into the mid game. Uh, unfortunately, that was never able to happen, and uh, Jarvan was... Yeah, I, I don't want to fling, but Jarvan, uh, just because of how much pressure that OGI put into uh, kind of counter jungling and, and making him useless uh, throughout the game, uh, really did do just that. Made that Jarvan useless, made his impact on the game very negligible. Uh, so good play overall from the side of Omega Gaming Ice. Yeah, uh, you know, to, to echo that, it wasn't that Hyde Haru was doing anything particularly bad here. It was just that... Supermark, the rest of Ice were permanently in his jungle, permanently able to find advantages, and when you concede a first blood to Olaf, as any champion, even though Jarvan is one of those champions, as you say, that wants to do things early on, you just can't versus a, a strong early game Olaf, so really well executed, as we say from Ice, that is going to be game number one going their way. Absolutely, and as we get ourselves ready for game number two, we will be going on over into a short uh, brief intermission here as we get ready for pro draft and all those other things on the back end. Again, I'm the idea PC joined by Rude Dude here on the desk for this upsurge minor leagues playoff match. We will see you right after the break. <laughs> 